anything. Yes? Well, the, it's different for the different uh, animals. The cows, who are herbivores, um, we can only have as many of those as we can grow forage to feed. All right? And so, um, so that, that becomes a limiting factor on the, on the uh, cows. Um, on the pigs and the, the omnivores, which require grain, uh, those, we, the main limiting factor is um, what can we have, wh what is the ecological carrying capacity, what is the nutrient carrying capacity of our soil here? Because we don't want to, I mean, if you if you uh, have too much nitrogen or phosphorus, for example, then the soil can metabolize. The soil does at that point doesn't differentiate whether it's organic, inorganic, or otherwise. Once that base is saturated, um, it regurgitates it to the Chesapeake Bay, to the air, to you know to whatever. All right, you can't put more in that inventory than it can stand. So that becomes the limiting factor. So, for example, the broilers, one of the reasons that we've come up with the 75 birds in a 10 by 12 floorless field shelter every day is because that's exactly the amount of nutrient that that pasture can handle with those birds. And so we don't come back to that same any square yard more than one day a year with those broilers because of the nutrient holding capacity. Now, on the cow. Um, one of the things that we do do, here's, here's the thing to, uh, to realize, uh, is that we use, if you, if you study herbivores in nature, and all great soils were built by herbivores, perennials, and periodic disturbance. If you study that system, you know, the, the wildebeest on the Serengeti, you know, caribou, um, um, of course the American bison, which are, are you know, not like they used to be. Um, but you, you, you look at these um, herbivores in nature, they exhibit three things. They're moving to a new ground all the time. They're mobbed up for predator protection, because there's a lion lurking in the bushes, right? And the third thing is they're mowing. You know, they're not eating dead cows. They're not eating carrion like you know, the U.S. duh told us to feed for 30 years. Uh, I think it's pretty disingenuous for the very agency that gave us bovine fungiform encephalopathy to try to position itself as the a repository of food safety. All right? Um, so, you know, and now they're in, you know, with this new Food Modernization Act, we've got, for example, now the FDA which, which uh, thinks it's perfectly safe to feed your kids Twinkies, Cocoa Puffs, and Coca-Cola, but that raw milk, Aunt Matilda's pickles, and compost-grown tomatoes might kill you. You know, um, to put, I mean, for, for President Obama to put the, the uh, Monsanto executive in charge of developing transgenic modified organisms for 10 years in charge of food safety at FDA is unbelievable. I could say other things, but we'll say unbelievable. <laughs> right. and, and, and this new this new Food Safety Act has given the FDA, for the first time, the authority to come onto a farm like this without a warrant and ascertain if we are practicing anything that is considered not science-based. Well, who's science? They believe uh, all food should be irradiated. That uh, transgenic modification is wonderful. That pesticides and herbicides are great. That concentrated animal feeding operations are wonderful. That, that uh, feeding antibiotics for diseases is great. I mean, who's science? See? And um, so this is a, we're in a very fluid time. And it'll be interesting to see what, you know, what, what comes of this. So for the different kinds of animals, there's different constraints. Now, with the herbivore, so moving, mobbing, and mowing. So every day we're moving those. We're we're we're, uh, we're confining the cows to a to a, a paddock, and every day we move them to a new paddock, so that at any one time all the farm is at rest except for the one paddock the cows happen to be on, and they're creating a one day disturbance on that paddock. They're harvesting the biomass, turning it into. Uh, uh, manure and urine, and they are restarting the fast biomass accumulator. The, the cow is the pruner that, that hits the restart button on the accumulation of the biomass. 
And, and an acre of grass will sequester way more carbon than an acre of forest if it's properly managed. So in Augusta County, by, by, by practicing this, this, this uh, natural template of moving, mobbing, mowing, in, a, in Augusta County, the average cow days per acre, a cow day is what one cow will eat in a day, okay? The average in Augusta County is 80 cow days per acre. Here, we're averaging over 400 cow days per acre, and we haven't planted a seed, we owe no plow, we haven't bought a bag of fertilizer in 50 years. Okay? So, when we talk about feeding the world, we, we now lease, we now rent five other farms. We have one, one, this is just a little portion, we have a herd of 750 head in one group over at one of the rental farms. They're not on hay, they're still on stockpiled forage that we, that we you know, uh, stockpiled through the late fall. And, and uh, they're over there. But every one of these farms, the very first season we go on to them, we double their production in the very first season from anything that anybody's seen for decades. Can we feed the world? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we can produce so much, it's, it's, it's incredible. In fact, 50% of all the edible food in the world goes to waste through spoilage and contamination and rot. Um, uh, Nobody's getting hungry in the world because of not enough food. They get hungry because of lack of distribution. If anybody in this room could snap their fingers tomorrow and double the world's food production, not one more belly would be filled because it's a distribution issue. See? And those have socio-political, I mean, there are all sorts of things involved with, you know, with, with distribution. 